Good afternoon, dear EMA community. In today's expert talk, we will gain insights from the newly arrived ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to Germany, Her Excellency Hafsa Alulama. Dear Excellency, our warm welcome to Germany. Despite the crisis, we are glad you are here to commonly strengthen German Emirati ties. Thank you very much, uh, Clara. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, you know, I wished, of course, I would have come to Germany at a time that uh, there was no corona. So I would have uh, been able to meet maybe more officials and have done more. But uh, thanks to technology, I think we are able even to continue with our work, albeit virtually. So I look forward to our meetings and our work together. Thank you so much. The United Arab Emirates have made great efforts to handle the COVID-19 pandemic, in particularly while de dealing with the simultaneous challenge of the oil price collapse. So how are the UAE doing now in this critical period? Yeah, thank you for this question. Actually, this is a, this is a very interesting question to, to ask because, um, you know, I consider UAE as uh, there are certain countries in the world, I call them very pragmatic countries mature and pragmatic and United Arab Emirates is actually a pragmatic country so when it's faced with challenges and, uh, and, and tough issues uh, it, 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 it looks into it and tries to analyze and find out how to solve these uh, challenges that are there. Uh, so as soon as we felt that the coronavirus is uh, becoming a global pandemic uh, we took major you know uh, steps. Uh, first thing was to make sure that we do as many tests as possible. Very important. So, and we put the healthcare sector as the most important sector in our country. Totally, you know, moved very quickly, very flexible in that area. Uh, we started having drive throughs for cars to come in and then within three minutes doing their tests and moving on. We use technology in a better way. So we put all our resources, if you will, into getting to know and understand uh, the, the causes and uh, how the spreading of this happens. Now, uh, of course, economically, everybody's been affected, and especially oil prices, uh, the way it uh, tumbled, uh, it has had, uh, you know, very difficult uh, impacts, of course, on, on the region, on our region and on other countries. But um, in our country, our leadership has made it clear, healthcare and food security are two important areas that nothing can touch. Talking about the economy, are there any specific measures that the UAE have implemented in order to support local and international businesses so far? Yes, we have. We have. Actually, um, you know, the, the government as a whole came up with uh, stimulus packages. So there were, there were some fiscal and monetary uh, uh, intervention, if you will, that the government did. Uh, on the monetary side, uh, we reduced our, for instance, uh, uh, interest rates by 125 basis points, you know, for companies. Uh, we offered loans to uh, small and medium-sized enterprises at a very or zero interest rate. That was important. Um, the reserve requirement for bank in our central bank went down, you know, uh, to only half of what it was, you know, from 14% to 7%. Uh, the government itself has come with fiscal programs and a stimulus uh, of over $7 billion in terms of uh, um, reducing fees and even eliminating fees uh, for uh, companies and for the uh, households and all. The EMA was looking very much forward to the upcoming Expo 2020 in Dubai. What are the obstacles that the pandemic has generated to the organization and the hosting of the Expo? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, as you know, because of the, this uh, objective challenge that happened uh, to the world, we know that major events all over the world have been postponed. In uh, UAE, uh, of course, we listened to a lot of countries and we found out that many of them were in favor of postponing it. And that's why uh, a proposition was given to the International Bureau of Exhibition to postpone that to the next year. And uh, everybody almost more than two-thirds all approved we are looking at the bright side and saying that next year will be the year that we'll have conquered let's say this uh, as much as possible the COVID, and it will be the year that every the whole world will celebrate yes. post 
COVID. And probably maybe it will be a, it will be a good, good uh, thing that it's got postponed in a way so that we can really celebrate this in, a, in an environment that would be positive, where we have already solutions, we are already working together, and it will be maybe a foundation for us to collaborate even more. Last but not least, I have a question about uh, digitalization of the UAE. You are one of the most digitalized countries in the world. So how does digitalization shape the overcoming of the current crisis and also the future of uh, the economy? As soon as this hit us and we had to, let's say, close the schools, we, it was very easy, the move that happened to homeschooling, for instance, for us. Because the infrastructure of the, you know, the internet and the online services and all, uh, that was there. At the same time, the teachers and were ready to provide these classes online. So it was very, very quick, actually, the move. It happened, I don't know, I felt it was like in a week's time, suddenly we saw all the kids are at home, they have their schools, classes are starting, you know, and they all went into the digital mode. And um, this, I would say, probably in a way, this, this challenge has made us look into the potential of what we can do that we were not taking, you know, for, and we are taking it for granted sometimes. We had all this infrastructure, but we were not doing much into going into the next, the fourth generation, if you will, uh, first industrial revolution that they talk about. Everybody was taking it easy, but I think this uh, pandemic maybe forced us to move into the next phase faster. And uh, in a way, UAE was, uh, was positioned well because we had these in place, we just needed to bring it up. So when it comes to education, we, a big part of our education is going to be still on the digital side of it. We actually had a major project in Abu Dhabi before uh, the pandemic started to provide classes through using technology more. So students used to come to the school but use all their laptops, their IT, and it was a very, and we were using um, artificial intelligence in finding out what students need, what kind of lesson they need to take. And we were doing it by them coming to the school, but once we had the pandemic, that went into their houses. So it just moved into another one. So this is something that we are going to continue doing, using technology as a source of strength for us in uh, handling challenges that will come. Your Excellency and Ulalma, I am really uh, happy about all those keywords I will take back uh, from this interview, namely uh, flexible and smart issues, moving forward, taking things from the bright side, talking to each other more and going the better way. Uh, this is my resume from, from <laughs> what you have expressing so far. Is there anything else that you want to share with our audience today? You know, let's have this connection continue, this build up these bridges of, uh, of talk and discussions as much as possible. And let's come up with a specific program. I, I hope that we can come up with certain action points that we can work together. And I look forward to that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Warmest welcome to Germany. And it's only about to start. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. <laughs>